Hello, I'm Robert Shanks. I'm co-founder of GoToImaging.com, along with my colleague Darren Chandler. Um, if you're a chiropractor, osteopath, physio, GP, or any other health and fitness uh, professional, we are passionate about um, improving understanding, uh, improving awareness, and improving confidence, really, when it comes to medical imaging uh, for musculoskeletal disorders. Uh, that means giving you the confidence to refer for scans yourselves, giving you the confidence to understand the reports and giving you the confidence to look at the images themselves so that you can uh, differentiate and, look and you know, decide when the reports are accurate, when they're not, and help to uh, provide a better service for your patients ultimately. Um, whether that means referring them on to somebody else, whether it means to be choosing certain techniques that you offer or certain exercises that you might want to give that patient. Um, you know, the MRI scans uh, really can be very, very valuable, uh, and other scans as well, uh, other imaging can be very, very valuable and powerful techniques to make and help you give an uh, informed decision for your patients. Now, of course, they can also uh, throw up a lot of red herrings, and that's why it's important to uh, really understand the process, understand the imaging, understand what's normal, what's not, what's um, you know, perhaps are just a normal, it's a relatively you know, normal degenerative finding and not relevant to that patient and, and what actually may well be indicating where their pain is coming from. Now, if we take uh, you know, back pain as an example, back, back pain in particular, especially these days, um, you know, patients quite often um, either turn up to the clinic with, their, with having had an MRI scan done, uh, waving their bits of paper around, you know, or the CD, handing, your, handing the CD to you, I've had an MRI scan done. Um, or they might need one, you know, but the truth is that as manual therapists and as physical therapists, we get very little training, um, unless you do the sort of training that we offer, um, in understanding and, and being confident with that, um, with, with those scans in the same way that, that let's say, a, you know, a surgeon might undergo. Um, and really the truth is that there's, there's lots of loopholes that can occur along the way. Um, and, you know, I'm going to explain now why um, and, and give us examples as well. OK, so here we go. The journey for a patient often starts with a referral. So that might be uh, the GP, the therapist, um, the surgeon or some other, you know, orthopedic consultant. Um, they'll be then referred on to an MRI centre or a private hospital with a scanner. And the radiographer is the person who puts that patient on the machine. They will also set the settings of the machine so they'll decide which weights to use, which weighting to use, the T1, the T2, sagittal, or other sequences. Um, but also more than that, they'll they'll um, decide on the exact slices to take, you know, so the sagittal slices, the exact actual slices at which levels. And they really are reliant on the accurate information, the clinical information coming through from the referrer because they, you know, quite honestly don't examine the patient or don't conduct the clinical examination. And quite understandably so. Now, the images then get sent on to a radiologist, and that radiologist is the person that is responsible for his medical consultant, and they're a doctor, they've done lots of years of training, and they are responsible for writing, writing a detailed report. But again, the thing to note here is that they don't examine the patient. In fact, they don't even speak to the patient, they don't even see the patient. Now, that report goes on and is written by the radiologist. I say that report then goes back to the original referrer. Now, unless you know, you're a surgeon who's confident of looking at the uh, MRI scans for your particular speciality, uh, you, you know, the, the GP, the therapist, is going to be pretty much pinning everything on that MRI report and uh, assuming that it's gospel and assuming that everything is, is accurate there and there's been no admissions and there's been you know, total accuracy. And now, unfortunately, as we, as we can see, because of this, this process, you know, that it's, it's kind of almost like Chinese whispers. So the referrer tells the radiographer what the clinical, what the clinical uh, findings are. Then that letter also goes to the radiologist, um, but then the radiologist hasn't decided on the slices to take and the exact images to, to do. And so they are writing a report based on those images and based on the information they get from the referrer. And let's just go through some examples now of when and how that can um, lead to problems. So this is an example. So this is this is a case of Bradley. Bradley was a, a young tennis player that I saw a few years ago. Uh, he was a national level player, um, very competitive, very active, and unfortunately had lots of months of back pain, middle back pain to be precise, so thoracic back pain. Now he'd seen umpteen therapists, lots of uh, you know, manual therapists before, 
and a lot of people would assume it's just he's a repetitive strain he's kind of he's exercising a lot he's a little bit round shoulders needs to do certain exercises to straighten himself up improve his rhomboids improve his you know, kyphosis that sort of stuff um, but he wasn't improving so um he went on to uh, various different people and uh, perhaps a physio referred him to a colleague of theirs who was an osteopath and the osteopath felt that the right thing to do would be to do an mri scan and the MRI scan was duly done. And what that showed was a few things which I've highlighted in red there. And it showed that um, he had a small node at T11. And he also had a little bit of wear and tear around the T67. And the T67 was the area where he was getting the pain. Had a little bit of degenerative disc disease there. Again, not, you know, not too uncommon, but you know, maybe that was the reason why he was getting so much pain. Um, but the idea was, okay, he's hinging down, he's stiff down here, he's hinging up here, so we need to try and take him out of that pattern. Again, different exercises and that sort of stuff. You know, nothing you know, too sinister going on. That went on for a few more months, and, and Bradley was still no better. So he ended up at my door, and uh, him and his mum, and um, the first thing really that I noticed was when I put the MRI scan CD in, what I noticed was that the actual images, so the, the slices this way, through the middle had all been done down at T11. They hadn't been done through the T67 area. And so for me, you know, the, the area where he had the pain hadn't been imaged fully. And it was the first time really anybody had told them that because nobody had actually looked at the images. Uh, they had the report and they looked at the images. So that's, that was the first discovery of that. I mean, that, that illustrates, I think, the importance um, for us as manual therapists of, as why we should have you know, as much knowledge and understanding of this process as possible. Because um, what I did was I wrote a letter. I mean, I suspected he might have had at that stage, I was thinking, mm, maybe he's got some sort of pars defect, maybe there's something going on in his fascia joint we need to know about, um, maybe something more. Um, and uh, we wrote back and we got him scanned, you know, the axles through the area. And unfortunately what happened was he came back, and what came back was that he had an osteoidosteoma. So he had, wasn't mechanical, you know, there was, there was a tumor there. Um, I referred him onto the sarcoma unit and as far as I know, he, he did well. But it illustrates the point that, you know, we only really knew about it by asking for that re-examination. Um, okay, and there's a lot more examples of uh, those sort of stories that you can see on our case studies page, um, which we are hopefully seeing now. So you will find lots of little snippets and videos and a few stories there. And we, Darren and I, we update this page quite regularly and add on new stories all the time. So well worth checking out if you want some uh, more examples of that sort of thing. Um, if you are interested in the training that we provide, you'll find details on the training page. So if you look at that, then you'll see the upcoming webinars and uh, coaching sessions that we're offering, uh, many of which are free. And um, you might also be interested in um, signing up to our uh, mailing list. And if you do so, you'll uh, receive notifications on the new dates as they're added. Um, and we'll also, you know, can sort of send you little, little snippets and little pointers as to um, how you can help uh, improve your confidence with all this sort of stuff. And familiarity. If you do want to read more about our journey um, and where we kind of learned all this stuff and, and how we um, you know, got into our the journey of you know working with these um, lots of top clinicians in London and surgeons and doctors, um, it's all on the, the About Us page there. Um, well worth looking at uh, read, um, listening to Darren's video just below my one, and he um, he explains a bit more about that and um, you know gives you a few more examples of um, some case studies as well. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of the website. Um, as I say, do, uh, do sign up, do drop us an email if you need to have any queries or want to get in touch. And uh, we'd love to see you uh, joining us for some of our training webinars.